Alright ladies and gentlemen, bitches, what's good? Welcome back to the channel. We're here recording live from the mothership. And we got the season two roundup for Southampton career mode. If you missed the last episode, go ahead and check that out. Because we're gonna have obviously some kind of spoilers in this one. Starting from now, we are the Premier League champions. We defeated Manchester City 1-0 on the final game of the season, and we secured the back. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go through a few things. We're gonna go through obviously our objectives for this season and the last few seasons. We're gonna go through squad report, see how things went in other leagues, see who's getting promoted, check out the final standings, all that kind of stuff, stats for this season. And obviously this might help you guys um take a look at player of the season and stuff like that. Um I mean help your decision on player of the season, all that, all that, all that good stuff. So um looking right here, um what I might do actually is put the poll on this episode. I was gonna put it on the final episode of the season. Uh on the final game of the season, sorry, but I might put it here just so you guys can take a look at um stats to help you decide on player of the season and all that kind of stuff. But uh getting into the objectives. Within two seasons increase the club worth by 20%. We've done that, I mean if we didn't by winning the league, I don't know what would have done that. Um so we, we got that one done. This was our first season to attempt it, and we've done it in the first attempt. Within two seasons, though, let's go to youth development, because we failed both of them, and those are high priority, and that's, I mean, I did say I was going to focus on youth, and that is something I want to do, but these are hard, like, I'm, look, especially that long-term one. So let's look at short-term ones. Sign four youth players to the senior team in the same season they were scouted, play them in 20 matches, either as part of starting 11 or coming on as a sub. Now, I don't know if that means all four players have to play in 20 matches or not. Either way, I failed. That one's not as tough. I probably could have died. But again, I didn't know if that meant all four players. So I didn't even really attempt it. But the long term one, look at this long. My bad. Within two seasons, have at least two players from the Youth Academy sign in the first season, play 50% of the game. 50%? That's it. 50%. Two play 50 but that, that's crazy they could have at least said 30 percent or something that would have been a lot more 50 percent that's crazy that's crazy half the games two players nah like I, I am gonna try for hopefully the next season when the objectives come we get more realistic ones and i will definitely look to achieve them especially with it being uh high priority but this season, I kind of knew I wasn't going to achieve that. And with the time four you've played, I didn't know if it meant play all four in 20 matches individually or combined. So I didn't really attempt it. Brand exposure within three seasons increased the ticket holders uh, with by at least 10... With at least 10... Increased season ticket holders with at least 10%. I think they mean buy. Um, so yeah, we, we haven't done that yet. I don't know if maybe that will update next season. But I would have thought that would... Again, with winning the league, I would have thought that would have happened. Sign one... Crucial first team player signed to midfielder position. I think we achieved that when we signed Sergi Dada. Um, or maybe it was Virgil Traore. I can't actually remember. But we, we achieved that. Financial success, we done that. Showed you just that. Uh, we increased the club work. Premier League, they wanted us to finish in a Champions League position. And we done better. We won the league. FA Cup, they wanted us to reach round of 16. And again, we done better. Reaching the quarterfinals. Champions League, they wanted us to reach the quarterfinals, and we won the sem we reached the semi-finals. So really, everything on the pitch, we achieved tenfold. The only problem is off the pitch in terms of youth development, which is something I really want to focus on with it being a Southampton career mode. So, next season, again, hopefully, we get something a little bit more realistic, and I will really go out and attempt that. And we definitely have some players that can come through and, and break into the squad, as you'll see as we go into a uh, squad report. All right, so we're gonna go over. We're gonna check stats and attributes. So let's start off with let's start off with attributes. Um, Alphonse Ariola, pretty good season as far as I'm concerned. I remember he made some brilliant saves. A little shaky at times, but overall very good. 82. The reason I haven't shown you guys the score report in so long is because obviously, as you guys will know, there's been this issue with the score report with players' uh, attributes showing up different in the score report as they do, as they actually are. So I don't even know. Uh, really and truthfully, I don't even know what ratings my players actually are. I don't know if these overrules are correct or not. I don't know. I, I, I have no clue. 
But Ariola, I mean, without any training whatsoever, he's grown pretty well. Like 12 kicking, six reactions. That he's grown pretty damn well, if you ask me. Uh, again, with no training. So stats: he played 50 games, 13 clean sheets. Not really his fault. Again, like I said, um, but we we did have we we struggled with keeping clean sheets in general as a team. So Ariola happy with Ariola getting him on a free contest while well, Matt Magnuson been out on loan all season but grown by a whopping 13 overall he might be one for the future only 17 years of age uh, I don't know what his it says on we can't see what his actual potential cap is but yeah grown by 13 all the attributes looking good but he's on loan uh, for us right now Jack Rose will be leaving us at the end of the season no games played not gonna play like we have uh, four goalkeepers gonna cut that down to three I don't think we ever need four goalkeepers and with it being 25 and only 65 overall we're gonna let him go his contract is up no need to renew that Angus Gunn one for the future didn't play too many games this season 11 games he stepped in when Ariola was injured for a while uh, but yeah I mean he's always looked good when he played so he's definitely the one to overtake Ariola at some point uh, in this career mode 78 overall grown by three Happy with uh, Angus Gunn. 11 games played, three clean sheets. Nathaniel Klein, brilliant at right back for us. Attributes I'm assuming haven't changed at all. Yep, L fine with that. <laughs> Not a problem, he's been solid. 41 appearances, one goal, one assist, nine clean sheets. Nathaniel Klein doing his job. Cedric is another player who's gonna leave us next season. He's joining Napoli, I think, yep. Napoli, Cedric, uh, he was, I didn't really wanna see him go, but I guess I kinda took too long trying to decide what to do with him. Uh, and he joined Napoli. Second half, his second half of the season was pretty good. He started playing a lot more. I say a lot more, he only played seven games total, but I would've kept him. I would I would have renewed his contract had he not decided to go Napoli, but he did. Is where it is. Grown by one. Nothing major. Jan Valery, uh, still unsure about him. I don't know what his potential is, but that's that's the good that's that's the good thing. I guess that's that's the whole point. Like I don't know if he'll turn out to be a, a wonder kid or not. You know, doesn't really look like he's gonna turn out to be a wonder kid, but he might still turn out to be a decent squad player if anything. Um, I think he has a lot of potential in real life, but again, like FIFA, I have no clue. It doesn't really look like he's got as much potential as I see. 14 games played, two assists, four clean sheets. I'm, I'm even saying though, I'm, I'm pretty happy. With, I'm decently happy with how he's going. Like 21 years old, 69. That's not bad. That's not bad. He could definitely turn out to be a squad player, backup right back if anything. Vestergaard's been out on loan with Roma and hasn't played a single game. Still unsure what we're gonna do with him. Hasn't grown at all. Hasn't decreased. Didn't play a single game though. I was very interested. I learned him out thinking he was gonna play very consistently. I don't know. I don't know what's gonna happen when he comes back. Benarek is in. Well, actually, no. My bad. I'm stupid. I completely forget how this works because this is stats for Premier League. Uh, so this is the stats for the competitions we play. So of course it's gonna say zero because he didn't play any Premier League games. He most likely played Serie A games. Uh, as for Champions League, I don't know if Roma were in it. They might have been in Europa League. So again, it's not gonna say against the Champions League. But um, unsure. Uh, Benarek is a different situation, of course. As you see right there, it says, "Oh no, that's preseason." My bad. See again, I don't know if he played for Sporting Lisbon, but Benarek we're gonna bring back next season, uh, probably for a squad role. Well, definitely for a squad role, unless he's really good. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, Benarek and Vestergaard especially, I'm unsure what's going to happen particularly. Jonathan Mason, young player, we'll see how he grows. Uh, not looking great at 60, but he's only 17, so not much to say about him. Maya Yoshida, I think only played one game this season. Uh, maybe let him... But look, this is what I'm talking about when people... You listen to these YouTubers talking about as soon as a player hits 30 overall, they, 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 they just die. Untrue. It's just untrue. Like, just... It's just... Look, he's 31, hasn't gone down at all this season. You know, even if he did, it's a minor, you know? It's a minor. But he hasn't, his stats haven't decreased at all. Some players, yeah, some players go down fast, some players don't. Some players don't go down at all for a while. It's just, just, just ignore it. Just ignore what they say. Stevens, I don't think, yeah, he played zero games. I'm most likely going to sell Stevens uh, next season. Uh, yeah, didn't play a single game, grew a bit, I, I guess, but didn't play. 
Wesley who out injured for a few months. How long? How, how long? Four weeks. So he'll be back for the beginning of next season. Played 38 games, two goals, 10 clean sheets. Was happy with Wesley Hoot. Uh, in terms of growth, a little bit. He's doing, he's doing well. Jumping's gone up. I love that. Aggression's gone up. Love that. Reactions. Love that. Strength. And and with, that's without training. So only 26 years old. Happy with Wesley Hoot. Kamer Rodriguez played brilliantly towards the second half of the season, especially after Hoot got injured. Very happy with him. 25 games, three goals, one assist, eight clean sheets, and growing nicely at the age of 28. Uh, so yeah, I was happy with Kamer. Um, even possibly could break into the first team next season. We'll see how things go. Uh, but yeah, very happy with Kamer Rodriguez. Mario Hermoso, very happy with him all season long. Uh, he's just good in the game. He's just he's not he's not great. He's just good. And the fact that he's so fast is just a bonus. Cause like, it, <laughs> he's he's really hard to get in behind. But stuff like jumping and he's got good strength for someone with his build and all that stuff. I, I'm just happy with him. His tackling is real good, as you can see right there. I like him. He's decent on the ball too. What's his stats look like? 48 games, so he was just ever present in the team. 12 clean sheets, so it looks like we got our most clean sheets when Hermoso was in the side. And a 7.2 rating as well. Ethan Ampadu, 16 games played, 3 goals. Got the most goals out of all of our defenders alongside Kamer Rodriguez. Uh, 16 games, 3 goals, 5 clean sheets. Ampadu will definitely be breaking into the side more. Uh, next season because again second half of the season he started playing more and he was real solid Granted he only played against a lot of the weaker sides But he was real solid when he did and his growth with the help of training has been brilliant He does that again next season and his stats will be looking good So Ethan and Padu and again we could play him in defensive midfield if we want to uh, Looking real good the man of the season Ryan Bertrand 42 games played two goals six assists and 14 clean sheets most clean sheets when he's in the team. Captain Marvel, man. Captain Marvel, he's been the guy. He's been the guy. So now, again, this is like 30 years old. He's gone down by two overall. But like, is is that what everyone's talking about? Is that what everyone's going on about? Like, that's nothing. It's nothing. Like, he's lost some pace. That's about it. Everything else is minor. Like, look, he's gone one jump in. And as you guys saw in the gameplay, it didn't affect him because he was winning headers left, right, and center. Um, jump in minus one, you know, stamina minus two. That's a minor. Strength, he was never about strength anyway. Other than that, he's lost marking minus one. Heading accuracy, that's a minor. Barely even matters. Sliding tackling minus one. Like, most of the stuff that actually matters is barely going down anyway. So, it's mainly the physicals that starts going down anyway, if it does. But again, it's a minor, man. So minor. Pace doesn't even matter as much this year anyway. So I mean it's not like he's dead. It's not like he's gone down to a, a 71 overall. So this is my thing, like if you can buy an 88 overall player at the age of 29, why would you not do that? Because like Yeah, he might go down next season, but he'll still be at 80 86. That's still a beast. <laughs> like, like why would you if you got like an 87 overall 30 year old, don't sell them. Why would you sell them? That's just stupid. But, um, yeah, here's what it is. Tell my Ortiz, uh, one for the future, 17 years of age, 61 overall, been out on loan, uh, grown quite nicely, without any training, of course, been out on loan, like I said, look at that growth. Up 11 ball control, up 10 short pass. I like that. I like that. Mark, Matt Target didn't play many games this season. Six, uh, six games played, one assist, two clean sheets for him. And he's growing nicely again. Um, with, with just a little bit of training. He's still only 24. Backup left back of the future maybe. Alongside Telmo. Until Telmo Ortiz gets ready to take that position. Maybe. Ben Chilwell. Left back for the future. Uh, for as long as Bertrand. Until Bertrand can't, can't do it no more. 17 games played. Uh, no goals or assists. Two clean sheets for him. 80 overall now. So, I mean, again, one for the future. He's growing nicely. I don't think I trained Bencho at any point this season either. 
So he's just growing nicely by himself. I like that. That's what I love to see. I love players who are growing without needing to be trained. Oriel Romeu, not much to say about him. He does his job and he does it. He does it brilliantly. And he's growing a little bit. Love it. Love it. Uh, ever present again. 31 games played, one goal, six assists, and eight clean sheets. Doing his job. Harrison Reed only three games played this season. Growth a little bit. Not much else to say about Harrison Reed. Nathaniel Redmond. 33 games, 8 goals, and 3 assists. Um, started the season really, really well. Kind of faded a little bit, but I guess looking at his stats, he, he had a pretty good season. It was pretty, pretty decent. Uh, came off the bench for a lot of those games, though, to be honest. Uh, not a huge amount, but a, a substantial amount. And again, he's growing well without having to be trained, so... And again, still only 26 years old. So I'm happy with Nathan Redmond's season. Uh, fighting for competition, fighting for positions, which you can't ask for much more. Danny Vandermeer, one of the players I'm talking about who can break into the squad at some point, maybe even next season, uh, to help with them youth objectives. I mean, he's one for the future, man. Vandermeer, the legendary Vandermeer on the channel. He is, he is a, a, a younger cousin of Maxwell Vandermeer. And he's got his brother in the team as well. Uh, up by nine, we've been focusing a lot of training on him earlier on in the season, crossing up by 21, low Jesus. Up by nine, yeah, next season, expect his stats to be a lot better, because we're going to train them again, a lot. But, just the name, he has to He has to have a spot in his team due to the name, he's, he's, a, he's part of the family. But, um, six games, probably more next season, Nils Olsen, another young player out on loan, not much else to say, he's been growing out on loan, well done, well done lad. James Ward-Prowse, 22 games, one goal, uh, two assists. Eh, I mean, he, he does a job, I guess. He does a job when we need him to come in and do a job. Nothing spectacular from him. Little bit of growth. James Ward-Prowse, I mean, he's a Southampton legend, though, you know? He's been, he's been here a while. So, is what is. Sergi Dada came in in January. 16 games, no goals, no assists. Which makes it seem a little bit worse than it is. But at the same time, I was a little bit underwhelmed by him. Um, I, I just feel like when I had him in the team, our attack wasn't as potent. However, towards the end of the season, I started playing him a little bit deeper at times. And it worked a little bit better. So maybe that's the move for Sergi Dada. Uh, or as they say, Sergi Dada. <laughs> they, they call him Sergi Dada in the, in the commentary. Yeah, maybe, that, maybe that's the move. Play him a little bit deeper. I don't know. Uh, grew a little bit But yeah, I mean I'm not just gonna throw him away though Like a lot of other youtubers would too. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna, we're gonna give him a chance to work out uh, But again, he wasn't terrible. He just wasn't Standout either at 82 overall Ollie Clark, I don't think played played one game in the Carabao Cup uh, we'll try, Again, we'll try and improve nice young English player. Are you really gonna rev your can you stop? I don't know if y'all heard that. Someone revving their mic about like a, like a nonce. Um, yeah. Growth, growing well. Can't ask for much more. Probably more football for him next season. Mario Lamina, just one of the midfield maestro, the, the Trinity in midfield, man. They just, they're just so good. They're just so good. 43 games played, two goals, eight assists, 13 clean sheets, 7.70. Rating. Is that the highest so far? It is. Just ahead of Romeo again. Oh, alongside Bertram. See, Bertram was just solid all season, man. 7.70. Joint best rating. He's been brilliant. And he's growing without training. Again. Love that. And he's growing well without training, too. Up four in attacking position. Composure. Up six in long shots. Love that. Only 26 years old still. Valverde. Oh, I love this guy. I love this kid. Second half of the season. Again, a lot of players started pushing through in the second half of the season. Second half of the season, he was brilliant. This young man was brilliant. 21 years old, 77 overall, growing. Didn't do a tremendous amount of growth without me having to help with training. But hopefully, uh, he's a bit of a, a later bloomer. And he'll start growing, hopefully even next season. Uh, I don't have to focus too much training on him, but... Performance-wise, brilliant. What were his stats like? 30 goals, three, 30 games, sorry. Three goals, five assists, and three clean sheets. 
uh, happy with that. He was brilliant. Pierre Emile Hoybier has the highest rating on the team. 7.8. 46 games played, 10 goals, 17 assists. 14 clean sheets. This man right here is a legend. Most clean sheets with him in the team too. He's a legend, man. He's just he's just so good. He's so good. The whole midfield. I don't want to single him out because it's the whole midfield three, man. Again, I don't think I trained him this season. And he's growing quite well. So he really definitely done a better job offensively this season as well. As you see with the goals and assists. Hoybier, his position solidified. I feel like he was an 82 overall though. So maybe that's part of the glitch. Uh, Oliver Hall on loan again. He grew by seven on loan. I like that. Only 17 overall. More football coming for a lot of these players. But my, out wide, my team is looking strong. A lot of this team is looking strong in terms of positioning. How many games did he play? One Carabao Cup game. So he probably played a lot of football for um, that Brentford. Yeah, for Brentford. Uh, at that rating, you would think he did. And it'll be there next season as well, I believe. I think I sent him out on loan halfway through. I, I can't remember. I can't remember. But um, good growth from Oliver Hall. Like that. Bartos Kapuchka. Meh. Meh. Good sometimes. Invisible sometimes. Uh, still yet to score his first goal for the team, just like Saji Uh 16 games, one assist. I did like him though. It's a low rating. Low, low average rating. Interesting, uh, but again, he's grown a bit. That a lot of that was with help as well, but some of it without help. I did realize that his finishing needed to improve, so we started training this finishing again up by eight. That's gonna need to improve a little bit more. The rest of his game is quite good, but his finishing and shooting, not so much. We could train that though. Josh Sims, I do want to give him more games, but it's just like I said, wing especially. A lot of players five for positions. Four games, one goal. Uh, uh, I mean, some growth, you know, 23 years old. He's still young. That's why I hang on to him, because he's still young. And he could be a role player for the future. Jake Hesketh, similar. A little less young, though. After coming back from loan, he really didn't get much game time. Uh, I don't know. I don't know about Jake Hesketh. Only 71 overall. Jens Moller. Uh, I thought he was on loan, to be honest. Maybe we'll send him out on loan next season. Uh, 18 overall, 69. Didn't play a single game. But again, a lot. Like I've said it before. A lot of these young players, they they just won't make it into squad, even if they are really good. Because look, 69 overall, 18 years old. That's really good. But he he just might not make it. You know, a lot of these players will be sold on. That's just the Southampton way. Not all of Southampton's young prospects end up playing for them. And if you, like a lot of them just get sold on. Part of part of being a team that grows young players is is growing young players to to send out into the world and flourish. You know, it's just part of the job. Uh, Cedric Vendelinden uh, out on loan all season, 17 years of age, grown quite well. For, again, for a player out on loan, grown really well actually. Plus five. Uh, yeah, we'll see when he comes back. Vermeulen, another player. Uh, damn, his overall is real low. <laughs> damn, Jane Vermeulen, he overall. You gotta step it up. You gotta grow a little bit better for that. But better than that for someone who's overall is that low. Uh, Miguel Miron, what a player. What a player. Still finding it hard to get him into the squad just because he plays best at Cam and we don't always play a Cam. But when he does play, look at He's just he's brilliant. He's, he's brilliant. 29 games, 13 goals, 5 assists. The kid is special. I think he's the joint highest overall player on the team now, which is crazy to think he's not a starter. Uh, but he's just brilliant, especially on the ball, man. You just feel feel the difference. He's so good on the ball. Lucas Vasquez, I did say joint highest overall. Joint with Vasquez. Vasquez hasn't grown a single attribute since having him, but again, I don't care. Doesn't make any difference. He's been brilliant once again. 53 games played, 16 goals, 17 assists, and joint highest average rating with Hoybia. 7.8. Uh, Bertrand Traore. Had a dry patch for a while, but overall he's been really good for us in his first season. Didn't even sign him to play up front, but the injury for Gabbiadini had him uh, had us put him up front, and he just he got off the he got out the gates firing, and he didn't look back. Uh, grown well again for a player who hasn't been trained. 
49 games, 29 goals, one goal off of that 30 mark. God damn it. 29 goals, 12 assists. Attacking wise, he's been brilliant. And again, highest average rating alongside Vasquez and Hoybier. Uh, Daniel Vandermeer, the brother of Danny Vandermeer, 19 years of age. Another one of the players we're going to try and bleed in starting from next season, hopefully. Grown well uh, thanks to our training, and that will continue next season. We'll continue to train him and his brother. He's only played one game this season. Uh, it is Charlie Austin, 13 games, two goals, four assists, down by two. Uh, but again, look at that. Like That's a minor. That is a minor. His pace has gone down barely. Strength has gone down a bit. Head and accuracy a bit. Dribbling a bit. It's, it's nothing. But I'm telling you, man. Don't believe the hype. As soon as they hit 30 on the road, they just start decreasing like crazy. Not true, man. Like, yeah, his overall's gone down by it too. But that's just a number at the end of the day. Because you look at the attributes and they're barely changed. Like... <laughs> It's not going to make a, a massive difference to the way he plays. Uh, Cole O'Donnell uh, didn't play, but we recently promoted him. So not much to say about this young man. Again, one for the future. Northern Ireland International. We'll see how he grows. Ryan Brewster was out on loan at Girona. Can't really see much about his stats. Don't know if he played or not. But he's been growing. Again, another one for the future. Turned 20 now. Gabby Adini. Well, you can't ask for too much more than him. He come back from injury and he, he he played his bit part role off the bench sometimes, started a few games and done well. 25 games, 9 goals and 3 assists, 7.3 ratting. Happy with him. But achoo, woo, achoo, woo, that's me. Growing a little bit. He's got a finesse straight. I can tell. Growing a little bit, doing the job for us. Sofian Bufal. Can't believe how good he was when he actually was all season really. He just he was just really good. I wasn't expecting it. We gave him his chances, he took them. Every time he played, he took his chance. We ended up giving him a starting position and he took it. He took his chance. 32 games, 12 goals, 7 assists. I'm just realizing this is gonna be a longer video, but you know what? It's a wrap-up. We, we can take it. And he's grown. And he's grown. And he's actually one of our highest uh, rated wingers. And he definitely plays like that. He's just really good. Yes, it's just really good. Uh, Harrison Brown, another young player, been out on loan at Lorient, 1665 overall. The boy is good. I got some good young wingers on this team. Damn. And then Hesse Rodriguez, another young player. I, I say young player. Another, sorry, another player who second half of the season played really well. Uh, signed him this season and to be honest he just had a really good season not much else to say about him 35 goals 35 games <laughs> sorry nine goals eight assists really good for a player who didn't start all his games came off the bench quite a bit uh, jumped in when we needed him to he's just really good so generally very good season overall for a lot of players no one really had a bad season for us uh, that's an in-depth look at the team so now let's check, let's look at the Premier League table. The final Premier League table. We are top three points ahead of Tottenham. And it was as close as it could have got. Champions League spots filled out by Man City and Man United. Liverpool take that Europa League spot. Chelsea, Everton, Arsenal complete. And then I guess Crystal Palace and Leicester complete the top 10 going down. West Ham and Wolves survived. I thought, I kind of thought West Ham were going to go down. Nottingham Forest, Stoke City and Aston Villa, the three promoted teams. I didn't want to see that happen. I didn't want to see the three promoted teams go down. But what can you do, I guess? You know, I see this because I don't want to see the three teams that got relegated last season come back up. So let's see how that works out. I'm pretty sure Newcastle are going to come up. Uh... I want, I want the league to be a little bit different. So let's check out a championship. Newcastle probably won the league. See, Burnley, Newcastle are coming up. Didn't want that. But it, it, it is what it is. And then the West Brom, Swansea, Derby and Leeds. Hopefully we get Derby up in it. You know, I love Derby. Who else got relegated with Burnley and Newcastle? Cardiff. Okay, they're not coming back up. That's cool. So we'll have at least one new team in it. So Derby, hopefully. If I'm a guess, I'm going to probably say it's West Brom. We're going to come back up. But 
we'll, we'll have to see. And then I guess the final thing we'll show you will be the uh, top goal scorers. Bertrand Triari took it in the end. Mane must have scored a hat-trick in this final game of the season because he was not there. He was not there. Kane was second. Uh, so yeah, Bertrand Triari took it. 22 goals in the Premier League. Hopefully he can do better next season. Assists. Ericsson took it. So Hoybier really slowed down with assists in the Premier League towards the second half of the season. Because he was he was quite a little bit ahead. So Ericsson took that. <laughs> Sorry, took that. We didn't get clean sheets because we struggled for clean sheets all season long. So that's it for season two. This is a 30 minute video. God damn! Oh yeah, we haven't checked actually. Player of the month for Sadio Mane. Player of the month for... Oh, the shortlist that is. For May. Valverde is in there. See, he had a good... That boy, that boy good. Player of the competition, Champions League. Lucas Vasquez. We win the Premier League title. So, are we going to be able to see... Who the player of the competition for the Premier League is? No. I think I probably missed that. But... That is the end of this season. Let's go ahead and let's simulate and let's kick off season three. And I will see you guys there. Hope you guys are ready. For now, peace.